All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 286, Epicurus. This is a creation series title. Uh, after they exhausted the religious history in the more straight-up sense, they released several dozen works on different philosophers and philosophical paths. The only one I'm really interested in, though, is Epicurus, because I, I like that particular path the most. Link in the description, as always, to my edition of this work on Amazon. It is 94 pages, so it's intermediate in length. Second and third links to my books, blogs. The rest of the creation series is scattered around, partially in the uh, in the spiritual header and partially academic. And I think a couple of them went in folklore, technically, as well. Um, this is a good work. Uh, and for those of you not familiar with the Epicurean philosophy, the basic premise, and, and, and I, I follow a modified version of this in my own life, the basic premise is, number one, it's technically hedonistic materialism. Uh, that is, pleasure is the highest good. Epicurus wasn't a, wasn't really involved with belief in the afterlife. He thought, of course, you know, just sort of dissolve into nothingness. The, the whole goal is to defeat fear of death by realizing, you know, there's no pain or suffering after you die because you're not there, so, you know, why worry about it, uh, number one. Number two, pleasure is the highest good, but you should reduce it. It's reductionist in the sense that you reduce it to the most simple, easily obtained pleasures. So the Epicurean would say that, you know, I'm just going to survive off of basic rudimentary food and water, and I'm going to learn to enjoy those by depriving the sense in some sense. They saw pleasure as not a bad thing, uh, but they didn't see extravagant hedonism as a good thing. They saw it as a distraction. What I've just talked about is imagine that you have a post-apocalyptic scenario. And one person likes fast cars, that's their biggest joy, fast cars and drugs and booze and stuff. And another person, they're like, they're a hillbilly. They want sunshine on their shoulders and horseradish on their, their dandelion salad. The latter person will still be happy if order breaks down. If they're on their own, order breaks down, society falls, they're perfectly fine. Their enjoyment hasn't really changed because the things that they enjoy are still there. The first person doesn't have cars and booze and stuff like that anymore because they, they don't exist. They've been deprived and therefore they suffer. Avoidance of suffering and pain is an Epicurean ideal too. The idea is to sort of deaden one's senses towards it in some senses as well. Epicurus talks about how the true sage, the truly enlightened individual under torture would still be happy because they were remembering when they were happy. Some of that gets a little bit murky. Anyway, this particular work dwells on the basics of his philosophy, but I think that the funnier section is really about the criticism of Epicurus by his critics, and then his towards them. Like, he calls one philosopher the mollusk. That was his nickname for him. Uh, he calls Democritus Democritus and so forth. I may be mispronouncing that, but uh, you get the basic idea. And of course, this is a fairly rough translation from ancient Greek, but <laughs> you get the point. Uh, and then they would say that he was a profligate, he was a pervert, he had orgies, he drank so much he would puke multiple times a day, I guess is one tale about him, and, and of course none of that's likely to be true. Um, it goes through the philosophy, though, and a little bit about the history, like the people who came directly before and after influenced him, who he influenced, uh, so it's a work of philosophical history as well. And the reason why I chose Dead at this one is specifically because of the closeness of my ideology, in modified form, of course, uh, to the Epicurean. I don't see it as necessary to live on bread and water and have a sort of quasi-communal lifestyle. And, and of course, I'm more open to the idea of there being a continuance of existence after death, which, by the way, also stops you from fearing death as much. Um, that being said, the basic premise of simple pleasure over extravagant pleasure, um, of gardening, writing books and stuff like that, as opposed to something that's totally unproductive and, and wild, now, that's a central core feature of my own spiritual philosophy. Not for any purely spiritual reason, I just think it's pragmatic. I just think that it's more positive. So again, link in the description to this work on Amazon. Uh, it is excellent. It is part of the creation series, so it's rigorously academic in nature. Second and third links to my books, blogs. There are a couple of, like, there's one on Swedenborg from the same series, the creation series. That one is technically a well, quasi-philosophical in his sense. He's more into the theological side of things. Now, Epicurus was into other things. He's an atomist, of course. Uh, and you can read more about it. Just, you know, read the Wikipedia page about him before it becomes politically correct, and they say, well, Epicurus was originally from uh, originally from sub-Saharan Africa and preached uh, Black Lives Matter, or something like that. They'll probably do that at some point, unfortunately. That's about all. Peace out.